So within my Forge account, I have DigitalOcean and AWS set up. I'm gonna use DigitalOcean for this. I think it's a more popular cloud to be used on Forge. And we are gonna start building some servers. I'm gonna start from the top of the infrastructure and go down. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna start with the entry point of our application. In other words, the load balancer, and then I'll make our application servers and our database server and our Redis server. And I'm not gonna make a worker server yet. We're gonna save that for another video, but we're gonna start with uh, those basic servers. So let's just go right ahead and make a load balancer server. Now, a nice part of Forge is that that is something that comes with out of the box. I can provision a server as a load balancer. So it takes away the database options. It still has a database name, but it just won't use it. It doesn't save or create a database on your load balancer server. And then we need to name it something. So I'm just gonna call it SL for scaling Laravel and LB for load balancer and the server size. Now server size for a load balancer is sort of an interesting thing. You don't actually need a lot of CPU or RAM because Nginx and HAProxy and all these load balancers are pretty efficient and they actually get capped by bandwidth more so than they do by CPU or RAM. So I think a one gigabyte or a two gigabyte server is just fine for a load balancer. You probably won't meet or hit the limits of your server by having a lower end server used as a load balancer. That being said, if your cloud like AWS has caps on bandwidth space on the server size, then you might want to use a larger server yourself, but I don't believe DigitalOcean does that. So this should be a good size. I'm going to do New York one for all of my servers. I'm in Texas. This is kind of close enough for me and post provision recipe. So I haven't showed you these yet and I've created these when I was doing a test run at all of this, but I have post provision recipes that is going to do certain stuff to the server after they get spun up. I'm going to do none. I'm going to run these later when we go through those. Database name, this field is just extra. There's not going to be a database on this load balancer, so we'll just leave that as forge. So that'll be our load balancer. We'll create it. And then I get a password for all of these. So I'm just going to save the passwords it gives me in a text file off screen. All right, and down here we can see our load balancer is being built. And we can go on and move ahead and start building our application servers. So we're gonna use DigitalOcean again. I'm gonna call it Scaling Laravel App 1. I'm gonna keep using two gigabyte servers for everything in this video. And this is not gonna be a load balancer. Okay, so we do have some options. I'm gonna keep 7.1 because 7.2 is still a pre-release as of this video. post provision recipe I'll do later. Database, I'm not gonna do any database because our application servers are gonna be separate from our database servers. So we'll do none, there's not gonna be any database, so obviously there will be no database name, and we can go ahead and just create that server. And then I can repeat that exact same step for a new server. So I'll just do SL app two, no recipe, database, gonna do none again, not a load balancer, New York, DigitalOcean, two gigabytes, perfect. We'll just create that server. And so far we have a load balancer and two application servers. Next, I'm gonna make our database server. So that'll be up here once again, SL, I'm just going to call it DB, so scaling Laravel, the database. Now, this is where you usually want to give more RAM and more CPU to your database. So four gigabytes and up, I think is a good database size. And of course, it depends on your application. You might want to do something like 16 gigabytes if your application is really under heavy load. I'm going to keep with two gigabytes just so this is a little cheaper on me while I'm recording this series. Region New York, PHP version, it won't matter, but I have to choose one, so 7.1. Post provision recipe, once again, we'll cover those later. And the database, I'm gonna use MySQL as I've been using through the entirety of this course. Now the database name here, I am gonna care about, although I could change it later, but I'm just gonna call it Scaling Laravel. And it's not a load balancer. I don't care about the weekly backups in this case, although you might want to do that in your database. And we'll create it. Okay, so a load balancer, a database, two application servers. The next thing I'm gonna make is a cache server and I'm gonna to prefer to use Redis, but of course it won't matter. Whenever we spin up a server on Forge, it's gonna have memcache and Redis and PHP and all that good stuff. So we will decide which one to use and then turn the other ones off later. So I'm just gonna call the scale in Laravel a cache server. Cache servers usually use RAM, so if you have a lot of stuff in cache, you want more RAM for your server. I'm still gonna keep on two gigabytes, of course, because it's cheaper for me while I record this. Post provision, I do have one for cache server. We'll see what that is later. No database on this, because it's just gonna be used for caching. So I'm just gonna use Redis in this case. All right, so these are five servers, and that's where I'm gonna start for now. Load balancer, database, a cache, and two application servers. In a later video, we'll add at least one other server to work on our queue workers as well.